Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and um, don't forget to like, subscribe and share um, with your fellow trading uh, colleagues. Um, it really does help the YouTube algorithm if you like and subscribe and get the quality content out there um, to the traders that really need it. And uh, our approach to Trading 180 is to really just apply fundamental analysis first to establish our directional bias overall for the medium to long term and even in the short term but then it's that, um, then apply technical analysis and supply and demand strategies to time trade entries risk management and establish profit targets overall so um let's get into the week ahead and heading to trading economics week ahead zooming in um the coming week will see the publication of a batch of economic data including inflation data for the US which is going to be important um, and uh, the others we don't trade other countries third quarter GDP figures for the UK that's definitely going to be watched uh, Malaysia and the Philippines uh, consumer sentiment for the US and Australia and foreign trade for Germany which is important for Europe and the euro also central banks in uh, okay the yeah, we don't really care about the uh, Thailand uh, Philippines and Mexico but um, yeah some interesting news coming out for the currencies that we do trade the uh, the major seven eight currencies that we end up uh, trading so um, that's coming up in the week ahead let's go now into some in-depth uh, technicals and fundamentals and starting off on the US dollar DXY index and um, yeah technically we have come back up into again this major area um, very very uh, um, it's a very obvious area of supply has been touched several times once twice and um, probably some profit taking going on in and around that area but um, I think the path of least resistance is to the upside and that's not based off of uh, looking at what you know technicals are pointing it's really to do with the fundamentals and this week or say last week um, on the third um, we had the uh, FOMC and the Federal Reserve Bank um, private bank the long road to normalcy so the Federal Reserve finally accepted the economy has made enough progress to start slowing the rate of QE purchases what does that pretty much mean it means that the um, the bank will stop printing money right they will um, they're not going to necessarily Necessarily buy a government debt as much government debt they're going to start to slow that purchase which is positive for the currency so they're not printing as much uh, money so the policy stance uh, remains very very stimulative with the Fed's balance sheet set to hit nine trillion next year uh, it's crazy the um, the economy is re-accelerating and it accelerating sorry and inflation will hit six percent meaning that pressure on the Fed to end QE early and hike rates will undoubtedly grow. So um, ultimately the, 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 the economy is growing which is what um, will support potential rate hikes, right? And um, and that's what the the, the, the the central bank and I guess the government are looking for is uh, for the economy to grow. It's very hard for um, or difficult for um, a central bank to hike rates and um, in the face, even if inflation is above the 2% target, but if the economy is not growing, that's what's known as stagflation, right? So um, it looks positive for the dollar so far. So really any pullbacks on um, for the dollar and also as well, the data has to support the narrative. So um, the data has to come in again quite strong or as expected for the dollar to continue to you know um to, to to rise in price and for the demand to remain on the dollar right so again down here is fx tapering offers su uh, support narrative to the dollar um so going back to really the charts and understanding you know where we are do you want to be a buyer of the dollar you know at these highs the, the best thing to do is really to kind of look for any kind of pullbacks right and you're not looking for any buy trades really on the uh, dollar index this the dollar index is just a measure of strength against you know the major um uh, uh, currencies like the euro the um the yen uh, and the pound but also as well um what you also have is um uh, is, is what we look for ultimately is is to see um, any kind of confluence so if prices do come down into an area 
of demand, then you want to look for buying opportunities. And someone probably watching this is probably thinking to themselves, well, how do I know in this wide area of demand what to look for, right? One of the things you can do, one of the things you can do is add some support and resistance within that area of demand, right? Is look for uh, an area of support and resistance and then look for any kind of um, uh, confluences within these areas, right? So if you start to see uh, a price start to turn up in the round that zone there, or maybe even the lower zone right here towards this uh, lower 93 area, that's where you're looking for confluences that starts to you know produce some uh, some bullish candles. Then look for buying opportunities on the um, other dollar crosses if you want to be a buyer of the dollar, right? If you don't believe that the, the dollar will uh, continue to uh, strengthen against the basket of currencies, regardless of what you think about you know the, the dollar and um, inflation, there are other currencies that are definitely in worse situations than the dollar um, and that's ultimately what we're trying to do right we're trying to buy divergences uh, strong against weak currencies so um, there there may be an opportunity this week to try and get short on the dollar but for me I think again the path of least resistance and I've been saying this ever since uh, June right June the 15th and this day here when the Fed really kind of announced to to, to, to buy um, the dollar they didn't actually come out and say that but they were saying that they were looking to hike rates which is always positive for the dollar um, that was where the path of these resistance has been right you can see what's really happened so it's just basically buying on pullbacks pull back into that zone there or maybe even the zone um, underneath it look for some confluences in and around that area there and then look for buying opportunities potentially if you're looking at the dollar index as confluence um uh on, on the other uh, forex pairs so nice shorting opportunity um as far as the location wise don't really like the zone it's been touched several times so i'm not keen on the level that's been touched several times to be fair but i think for me again looking at buying opportunities um uh, for the dollar and let's see what happens moving on uh, to the dollar yen and again the dollar yen um, has, did come down uh, last week we were saying this the prices did go up to the again the supply zone and we're in this uh, this ranging market I guess uh, an agreed value between buyers and sellers right that's at the moment that's expensive and that's uh, that was uh, seen as, as, as cheap right so there were buyers here but um, I think Overall, again, the, uh, the the dollar is a buy. Not too sure whether this is the whether this is the best buy. I probably waiting for a bit of a stop hunt below that market, and then looking for any kind of long trades. If you're in the group, you'll understand what the setup is. But if we're looking at just supply and demand zones, here is an okay level. But I think if anything, if prices do come back down to this uh, one eleven fifty, that's going to look like a very very cheap zone for the for the dollar. And why would prices potentially come down to that area if you have what is known as a risk off scenario? Then um, risk off meaning uh, some fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The Japanese yen does tend to strengthen in a risk off environment, so you'd probably want to um, uh, maybe avoid that. But I think oh, I think the uh, the um, the dollar should be a decent buy um, in and around these areas. If not, probably somewhere in between, but you'd have to wait for price to kind of prove that there's demand in certain areas, either there or there before looking at getting long. But um, let's see what happens in this zone. If you are looking to get short, let me just clear all this off a little bit. Um, then I think the uh, the, the uh, 114 uh, 50 area is decent for a potential uh, short trade in that zone but um, again I'm looking for buying opportunities on this currency pair moving on to the uh, dollar Swiss and I um, actually missed this trade there's a few traders that did get involved in that made some uh, decent profit prices have pulled back and I do think again if prices can pull back to this zone here or even actually down to this uh, 91 round number again do think that actually might be a decent buy um, uh, for that um, uh, dollar Swiss. Uh, some traders, uh, in again, in the group will know this as to be a bit of a CPR capture pain relief setup. So that 91 area, um, I'm, I'm watching it for sure. If if that level doesn't you know uh, hold, then I will be looking at uh, buy trades in and around this area. If you're looking at sell trades and supply, and again, uh, you would be looking at 
sell trades on this currency pair really because um, of the fact that there could be potential risk off and if there is risk off again the Swiss franc is one of the currencies that generally will tend to um, uh, strengthen it in a risk off environment any pullbacks into supply zones are, um, uh, are, are sell trades dollar cad and the dollar cad's come up to an interesting area matter of fact the canadian dollar um, should want to strengthen at some point uh, because they are um, next to um, they're in a similar situation to uh, the US dollar and the Federal Reserve where the Bank of Canada have come out and said that they're you know pretty much uh, trying to end quantitative easing so uh, potentially this could be actually a decent sell personally it's not currency pair that I like uh, to trade simply because they're, they're both um, looking to strengthen their currencies and uh, uh, the divergence really isn't there so for me I'm, um, I'm I'm gonna avoid this but if you do want to take advantage of a potential supply zone and you think that that's a bargain area for the um, uh, the Canadian dollar against the US dollar then uh, there's a short trade right there any long trades probably down into this one two three uh, one two two fifty area before looking at any long trades uh, moving on to the pound dollar and um, the pound dollar um, unfortunately I didn't get involved in this trade uh, there was a um, I know there was a couple of traders that did get involved in this in the group and uh, uh, made some decent amount of, of money we were basically talking about this area being a profit taking area and uh, I was waiting for just a bit more higher prices prices didn't go um, as I expected or say I expected but I wanted them to uh, so unfortunately I did miss out but we knew that the path of least resistance was to the downside and when I say we knew I mean that we had a, a, a high probability right based off of our fundamental analysis and um, I've been short on the pound for um, for a while now for a Probably over a month that's been my bias and uh, if you look at the uh, the Bank of England again uh, in case you missed it they didn't high crates the market expected them to but they actually didn't they held off and the, again the reasons were because um, there was talks of stagflation meaning that the economy really wasn't growing but inflation potentially um, I say potentially but inflation was going higher right so um, uh, the the, the fact that they didn't high crates disappointed the markets and um, and, uh, and and you saw a drop in the pound uh, valuation but the UK uh, Bank of England is set to hike less quickly than markets expect and the UK central bank looks poised to increase rates this December and we expect two further hikes next year but growth headwinds and a comparatively less severe inflation issue suggests markets are overestimating the pace of tightening. Brexit is also set to return as a source of uncertainty as tensions build between the UK and the EU. So um, from an analysis perspective, um, there's a lot going on with the pound and I think the pound potentially could be a buy at some point but you'd really want to see um, the, uh, uh, the economy turn around. I think for now the economy in the third quarter isn't going to be great. I think there's, they were talking about um, potential slowdowns in the economy again which meant which kind of meant that the um, the bank it was hard for the bank to really um, uh, hike rates because they could have hurt the economy by hiking rates uh, too soon. So um, again, I think the path of the resistance is to the downside. Any pullbacks into that one three six area for me anyway would be a, a really nice uh, short trade and let's see what happens um, there um, if you do want to get long on the pound um, then you're probably looking at probably right now would be a decent area to look for any kind of long trades but for me I think the path of least resistance is to the downside and uh, regardless of, of, of whether they uh, hike rates I think this starts to become a buy only if GDP right starts to um, you know grow there's some really good numbers with GDP that will support a rate hike but other than that if, if GDP comes out for the third quarter as, as flat um, or, or, or negative uh, it misses expectations then um, I think like I said any pullbacks on this currency pair will be a shorting opportunity um, moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar again um, uh, a really nice stop hunt above that area there and um, again we were talking this week uh, about shorts and the pound which 
pretty much materialized so the, the pounds so shorts on the euro uh, which really kind of materialized and um, again looking at the divergence between uh, the uh, euro and the dollar um, the euro outlook the guard rejects 2022 rate hike right so the euro exchange rates were soft there midweek um, uh, trade and faced a challenging outlook after the head of European Central Bank sent markets a clear message that they were wrong to expect interest rate rises as soon as 2022. So they have no plans in next year and pretty much this year is finished, right? A um, couple of months and then that's it, we're in 2022. But um, they have no plans to hike rates. Whereas if you go back to, for example, the dollar, um, they're, they're talking about potential uh, rate hikes, um, you know, maybe next year, right? Tapering, etc. So it's looking a lot more positive. And again, going to the charts, this is why this is being reflected on, you know, the price chart. So um, that's not to say that prices can't, you know, go higher, but I think any moves to the upside for me are shorting opportunities. That's the way that I'm looking at this, and especially if prices do come up to this 116, uh, uh, 116 7 area, I think for me that is going to be a really, really nice uh, shorting opportunity um, to look for any kind of short trades. So, um, but if you are buying the uh, the euro for whatever reason, there is a turnaround in 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 the euro fortunes and the uh, uh, GDP etc. Then. Uh, you're looking at um, a nice buying opportunity just because there's a pin bar there doesn't mean that there's going to be a, a, it is a buying opportunity because there's lots of stops below that um, from traders uninformed traders potentially and what you could see is prices start to then start to take out that liquidity um, so be careful if you are looking to buy again you're seeing where you know the, the price trend is you're seeing where fundamentally um, you know the divergences between the two central banks um, and uh, for me again any pullbacks are shorting opportunities uh, looking now at the Aussie dollar Aussie dollar um, again looking at any kind of buy trades at a recent high I'm say to traders just avoid this right you want to avoid buying at highs if you see this was a bargain area and that was an expensive area buying it highs is not something that you really should uh, look to do right you want to look for buying opportunities in and around uh, pullbacks so again if you're looking at buying the Australian dollar for me I'm not really keen on this pair and um, I think the US dollar is really the one to buy um, currently when it comes to monetary policy anyways um, although the Australian dollar I can see the fortune starting to turn around a little bit um, but for me uh, I think that again any kind of pullbacks into some supply zones will be shorting opportunities so we've got a supply zone there we've also got a decent supply zone right here so any pullbacks into those zones uh, decent shorting um, opportunities but I think there are definitely better trades to uh, buy the dollar and better currencies to buy the dollar against um, and again if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar um, the ash I think now is a really nice uh, technical setup I don't really like the uh, fundamentals though uh, and finally gold 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 so again with gold um, although the dollar did didn't really weaken too much gold definitely you know strengthened more on inflation concerns and global inflation concerns and potential risk off sentiment um, you can see it you know bouncing off this uh, this demand zone right here over the past couple of days and if inflation again starts to get out of hand then um, gold is obviously a hedge against inflation um, and the dollar but um, um, again a very uh, kind of a bit of a tough um, for me anyway a bit of a tough um, uh, trade because uh, the dollar is looking to strengthen their currency right which should actually keep a lid um, on gold but again it de just depends on whether the uh, big traders uh, believe that the uh, inflation is transitory or temporary or whether if they believe that the Fed if the Fed haven't got a lid on inflation then you should see gold go to the upside regardless of what the dollar does so um, I think this area here is a, is a decent area for, to look for any kind of short trades although it has been touched once twice um, yeah so it's touched actually in fact I don't I, I don't really I wouldn't take that trade personally I'm 
probably more wait for a stop hunt if I was looking for any kind of uh, short trades. But if you do want to get short in that area, that 118, sorry, the 1830 area for gold, then um, that's that's decent for a short, but you'd have to obviously believe that the dollar is going to get stronger and there's no inflation fears, right? If you do want to be a buyer of gold, then the next area to look for by trades is going to be that area there. Produced a nice level of demand. Any kind of pullbacks into that zone there is going to be decent for a buy trade. So that uh, one, um, the 1790 area uh, for gold, right? Um, so guys, that's it for this week. I um, hope you uh, enjoyed the analysis. Please again, don't forget to like, subscribe and share um, the video content on uh, all the social media channels from Facebook to uh, to uh, TikTok to uh, Instagram and uh, really get the quality content out there. Um, take care, guys. Have a great trading week and speak to you all soon.